In 1980, Superman 2 had just come out and the producers were already working on a sequel. Ilya Salkine, producer and son of fellow producer Alexander Salkine, came up with the story treatment for a potential Superman 3. And it didn't get much past that because it was awful. While Warner Brothers didn't produce the Christopher Reeve movies, they did distribute them, and Warner Brothers hated this movie idea so much that they essentially threatened not to distribute the movie if they made it like this. So, how bad is it? Well, let's find out. So yeah, this video ended up being really long by the way, so it's being split into two parts, but unlike with the Power Rangers thing, the second part is going to be my next video barring any big news. So just hold off for a little bit. The story could start with a pre-title sequence showing Clark learning that Lois Lane has asked to be transferred as a correspondent to one of the foreign offices associated with the Daily Planet, Hong Kong. He learns this from a letter from her where she tells him that she cannot go on living in Metropolis, constantly being in contact with Superman as he is the love of her life and she cannot stand the emotional pressure and prefers to forget as much as possible by moving away. At the same time, she sends her love to Clark as a friend. This could be done using Lois's voice, or he could read it. This leaves Clark obviously very distraught, and as we all know that he is Superman slash Clark who loves Lois. We introduce again Perry White and Jimmy who try to cheer Clark up. They would be telling him a bit more why she was so fed up. We could possibly at this point introduce Lana Lang as the new star reporter at the Daily Planet. We see Clark being quite impressed with Lana Lang, and they immediately take a liking to each other. Credits Immediately after the credits, we end up explaining how at the time of the explosion of Krypton, there was another survivor, Supergirl. We then establish her escape from Krypton in accordance with the comics legend, and we show her landing on Brainiac's planet. A younger Brainiac will find her in the equivalent of the wheat field in the first film. However, the whole sequence should be the total opposite to the Kent landing. The planet being all black and sinister, Brainiac's suit being utterly black, the whole thing being totally pessimistic. Brainiac finds the baby girl and takes her home. We then follow with various sequences of her growing up. We see that she has superpowers and we understand clearly that Brainiac is getting very affectionate. Primarily as a father. But as she gets older into adolescence, his affection is of a man in love. A sequence follows where we see Brainiac affected by Supergirl's befriending others, etc., which leads to her rejecting his marriage proposal. As the tension becomes greater, she decides to run away and by destiny lands in a little city in the USA. Here we leave to find the explanation of why she takes on a secret identity when she becomes one of the inhabitants of, i.e. Girlsville. She gets adopted by locals and becomes a gym teacher at the local school, here again in accordance with comics legend. Her exceptional Kryptonian powers make her easily assimilate Earth's ways. During this period, we cut to Brainiac looking for her all over the universe using his remarkable technical genius. Concurrently, we also see Superman doing one or two of his feats. Sooner or later, Supergirl will reveal her powers by solving a local threat which will make her known to Superman and the world. We will see Superman's reaction when he learns about this new superheroine from the media. He is obviously puzzled and needs to know more about her. To do this, he poses as a petty criminal to see how she will react and to see basically whether she is good or evil. She, of course, immediately comes to the rescue and finds him out. The look between the two will tell the audience that they have magically fallen in love. There is then conversation trying to find out if they are related. They are not. Then there is an idyllic sequence of Superman and Supergirl climbing up to 7th heaven. We shall have to find some beautiful place either on Earth or elsewhere, i.e. the Milky Way galaxy. Leaving them in their bliss, we move to Brainiac arriving on Earth. He immediately transforms stones into gold and diamonds to have wealth and power on Earth. We then see Brainiac establish his headquarters in a historical European castle. We see him setting up his weaponry, which is highly sophisticated. Through his ESP, he finds out about Supergirl, what she is doing, where she is, etc. 
Naturally, during these endeavors, he also finds out about Superman, his strength, and more so, his love for Supergirl and that this same love is reciprocated. Brainiac's purpose from then on is to create a machine which will affect Superman's personality. This will have to be very carefully explained for the children, and will have to show Brainiac moving various buttons, and somehow showing how each button will make Superman either violent, melancholic, or sarcastically funny. These ideas can obviously be changed, but will show that Superman will become totally unpredictable in Brainiac's hands. Obviously, Clark Kent will also be affected by these same reactions alternatively, i.e. Clark Kent slaps Perry White when asked to correct one of his own articles. When we leave Brainiac, we go to Superman and Supergirl involved in some sort of feat. Together, blissfully in love, suddenly and totally unexpectedly, Superman becomes violent and starts to destroy everything they are trying to save. In different ways, this will happen and be repeated at different times. This of course will make Supergirl think, panic with disbelief, that this is not the Superman she knew. She obviously tries everything to play along with Superman's total unpredictable moments. Her resistance of course weakens and at that point we have intercuts showing the world totally bewildered by the actions of this now very strange Superman. There is the tension building up that everyone wants Supergirl to get rid of Superman as she is the only one with enough strength to do it. At this critical moment, Brainiac appears in front of Supergirl and offers her a deal, this sequence to be delicately thought as they are meeting for the first time since her escape from him. If Supergirl agrees to marry him, he will stop affecting Superman's personality. If she doesn't, he will bring Superman to the utmost state of total evil madness. Supergirl's reaction is one of despair, sufferance, and confusion as she still feels a daughterly love for Brainiac. But seeing that the evil genius has lost all control through his passion for her, she decides to play along with him to find a way to discover a weakness, Brainiac's Achilles heel, and follows him to his castle. Superman, meanwhile, being released from Brainiac's hold, Supergirl is still playing for time with Brainiac, is searching desperately for Supergirl, as for some reason she has disappeared from the face of the Earth. While flying in his search for Supergirl, Superman suddenly encounters Mr. Migsy's Pitalik, a strange small little man. There should of course be some sort of explanation with regard to Mr. Migsy's Pitalik. Then we see Superman trying to save the world from Mr. Migsy's Pitalik's deadly jokes, which can kill hundreds of thousands of people. To be continued in the next installment of The Geek Who Hath No Name.